Welcome back as the Fox Texas Trio unpacks the ramifications of the massive surge in border crossings set in motion by President Joe Biden's revocation of Title 42 restrictions. Rudy, communities across the uh, Texas border were already under duress, some in a state of emergency, and yet the president opened the fire hose anyway, dispatching 1,500 troops to somehow ease the pressure. Your take on what's unfolding? Look, in defense of the Biden administration, you know, Title 42, we knew Title 42 was going to go. It's a pandemic era policy. It had to do with the pandemic. It had to do with COVID, right? So in defense of the Biden administration, Title 42 had to go. Now, here's the rub. Every time I see the images of the surge, I can't help but think of the constant denials and, frankly, outright lies pitched by the White House spokesperson regarding this border crisis. The fact that she has kept her job amazes the PR professionals that I talk to here in the Austin area. Now, uh, with that is why my word was fiddle, as in the instrument, fiddle. Here's my thought on that. Elected officials and people in law enforcement tell me they feel betrayed by the Biden administration, especially by the lack of a real plan to prepare for what's happening now on the border. Come on, we knew this was coming, right? It's like the story of Emperor Nero playing his fiddle while Rome burned. Greg? Well said, Stephen. There are 20,000 worn out agents in the entire Border Patrol tasked with somehow dealing with a projected inflow of hundreds of thousands crossing or expected to cross. Is there any way the Biden administration comes away undamaged by the optics and the ongoing reality of opening the border? I mean, even the Democratic big city mayors are protesting. Yeah, piggybacking off of Rudy. Now, we knew Title 42 was going to end in some way, and I, I saw someone comment on Twitter this week saying that Title 42 has become politicized when it was something to deal with the health and safety during the pandemic. That aside, the Biden administration is going to get heat, but they've been getting heat for two years. I don't see how just, of course, the optics are bad, but I don't see how if you're already upset with the president and his administration about the actions on the border, you've already lost his vote. And so I don't think the president is really going to feel as big of an impact as some people think from the influx at the border. Of course, it's a problem. Of course, there's no plan. Newly um, running for Senate, Congressman Colin Allred even came out with a statement this week kind of distancing himself, saying the Biden administration has made failures. It's no secret there's been failures, but will it ultimately hurt him? I don't think the border will be the sole reason if President Biden loses re-election. Okay, Rudy, you heard the DEA, you heard the former ICE director, you heard Ted Cruz, you heard Greg Abbott. Could this decision by the president seriously haunt his re-election effort? Stephen just talked about it. Yeah, and I just heard Stephen. I, I've got to disagree with Stephen. I think that if this situation continues to fester, then it will become a ballot box issue. Now, the comments, those other comments, in a way, to me, sounds like articles of impeachment, right? But I think what's being said now from the moms and the dads who have lost children to fentanyl overdoses and those roadway billboards that we're starting to see, the images of the kids who have died from fentanyl overdoses, those billboards that are going up, I think that those images could ling linger longer into the election cycle beyond the comets themselves. Okay, Stephen, now to the practical. Many of these immigrants will soon be relying on public support, food, health care, schools, housing. How will that play with folks in North Texas as the nation struggles with a potential debt crisis? Right, and just aside from the debt crisis, things are a little different than the last time North Texas took in a migrant population. They were able to be housed in the K. Bailey Hutchinson Convention Center. Well, that's not going to be able to happen. It's summertime. Things are back to normal. There's a convention uh, basically every week in the city of Dallas, and so the housing <coughs> is more of a concern as to where will this come from. All right, Rudy, quickly, how about in Central Texas where there's already a significant challenge with homelessness? You know, this all plays into what I almost was my word for the day, which is Mayorkas, named for the Homeland Security Director, keeping to turning left, where you're just going in circles, left-hand circles constantly. The policies by the Austin City Council years ago, certainly causing a crisis here, the lack of a centralized real strategy. Now we're seeing more families on the street corners begging for money, and a growing number of those families, they're not your typical migrants from South America, from other countries. So yeah, we are seeing the problem right here.
Yeah, hearing the same from our own Houston, uh, Houston Mayor Sylvester Turner. Got to leave it there. To see this interview and others, go to our Fox Station's YouTube pages. And keep the conversation going with us by reaching out to us on our social media. Next week, we go back under the Capitol Dome as the regular session grinds into the final days. We'll take a look at what's still in play, what's not, including the growing possibility, oh, should I say it, a special session. We'll see you then, and don't forget to let us know what you think the issue is.